My name is Dr. George Abraham. I am a consultant kidney specialist at the Madras Medical Mission Hospital, Chennai, and a professor of medicine at the Pondicherry Institute of Medical Sciences. I would like to highlight on kidney disease in this country. There are two types of kidney disease. One is acute kidney injury. We call it as acute kidney injury because the kidney disease results in less than three months. And the next entity is called chronic kidney disease, whereby it is a slowly progressive scar in the kidney, which is often asymptomatic and is irreversible. It is believed that uh, in India, which is the second most populous country in the world, we have 17% of the population do have chronic kidney disease. As we published an article about kidney disease in different regions of the world uh, in Lancet in 2016. And this highlights the fact that majority of the chronic kidney disease in India is not diagnosed. The Chronic Kidney Disease Registry of India, which was published in 2010, shows that 31% of the chronic kidney disease in India is as a result of diabetic kidney disease. We know that we have about 60 million diabetics in this country. So it is possible that every third diabetic can develop chronic kidney disease over a period of 15 to 20 years when they have di diagnosed with the diabetes. Now, let me just uh, go back to the treatment available for chronic kidney disease. Every year, nearly 200 people per million population of our country develop end-stage kidney disease. End-stage kidney disease stands for terminal kidney failure, where you need either dialysis or transplant to be alive and to continue your life. So both dialysis and transplant are life-saving treatment to help the people with kidney disease. Now, go back to the, to the early part of kidney disease. It was recently a group of people were invited to Mexico City and I was there from India to form the guidelines and consensus for early detection and treatment of chronic kidney disease. And the group included about 60 people, and it comprised of people with chronic kidney disease, the transplant patients, economics, and uh, social workers, kidney doctors, and people from other walks of life. The organization which sort of uh, uh, promoted this initiative is called KDGO. K stands for Kidney Disease Improving Global Outcome. So KDGO is an establishment which gives guidelines for various kidney disease. So after three days of deliberations, we said that the people who should be screened are the one who are targeted to have kidney disease. Who are these targeted individuals? The people with diabetes, people with high blood pressure, people with heart disease, people with a family history of kidney disease, people who had previous acute kidney injury and whom we think they have recovered, and those people who are taking, we call it as nephrotoxins, it could be alternative medications or medications which can damage the kidney. So these group of people should be screened for chronic kidney disease. And if we can f diagnose them, these people can benefit from early intervention, such as blood pressure control, diabetic control, then preventing uh, them from taking uh, medications which can damage the kidney. And if there is a family history of kidney disease, if the member is diagnosed to have chronic kidney disease, they can be taken care of. So, the, this is called a targeted intervention to detect early kidney disease and also to prevent the kidney disease. We have the second most populous country in this world. And we know that we have a huge burden 
of diabetes and high blood pressure and heart disease. And there are thousands and tens of thousands of people who take alternative medicines, either for getting their body well or for treatment of illness for which there is no cure. And these people have to be monitored for the presence of kidney disease. How do you monitor them? There are few simple tests which can be done to monitor these people, whether they have kidney disease or not. One is a test which is done with blood. It is called creatinine level. Creatinine is a chemical in the blood which circulates in the blood. And daily, every second, it is being filtered by the kidney and it is thrown out through the urine. So the level is fixed. So if you find that a creatinine level is high and we do a test called estimated glomerular filtration rate. Glomerular filtration rate is the function which we check for kidney disease. And estimated glomerular filtration rate can be calculated simply by using a formula within about 50 seconds. And uh, we, we will know that whether the patient has got an estimated glomerular filtration rate, which is normal or low. So there is another molecule also called a cystatin. So cystatin can also be used. Uh, cystatin is present in the blood. And it can also be used to monitor the kidney function by measuring the estimated glomerular filtration rate. The next text we do is a urine examination. You give collect a sample of urine from the patient and check for abnormalities in the urine. These abnormalities could be the presence of blood in the urine or the presence of albumin, which is a protein excreted through the kidney when the kidney disease exists. And these three tests can detect kidney disease. And if the, these tests are abnormal, we know that the individual has chronic kidney disease and he should be put on priority for prevention or early treatment of kidney disease so that we can do either reverse it or slow down the progression of kidney disease. So it is mandatory that every doctor in this country, whether it is a primary care physician or the, the other doctors, any specialty doctor, when he sees a, an individual who comes to him for help, they, these initiatives should be taken. As I already said, Ask questions, as I said, targeted population. Uh, do you belong to the targeted population? And if they belong to the targeted population, as I have already mentioned, they should be screened for kidney disease. The next question is blood pressure control. We have uh, millions of people with high blood pressure in this country. A lot of them take medications, but their blood pressure is never under control. We need to control their blood pressure in an adult individual. The blood pressure should not exceed anywhere between 130 to 140 upper limit. And if it can be brought below 130, if it can be tolerated by the individual, this is well and good. So blood pressure control is a very important thing. How do you control the blood pressure? Simple. You lose weight, do exercise, reduce salt in the diet, and be careful about taking alternative medications which can increase your blood pressure. So simple remedies of lifestyle changes and then medications can control the blood pressure. India is one of the countries where you get blood pressure medications the cheapest in the world. So all the, our pharmaceutical companies make molecules which can control the blood pressure easily. But the most important responsibility of the individual is to make sure that their blood pressure is checked when they are taking blood pressure medications, and it should be in the ideal range which I mentioned, the upper blood pressure, which is called the systolic blood pressure. Now, the children, we always feel that children do not get kidney disease, chronic kidney disease, but every child should have a blood pressure tested from the age of three onwards and every year because the presence of chronic kidney disease in children will not be evident unless you check a blood pressure. And if the blood pressure is normal and if the urine examination is normal, you don't have to worry. But in children, the, the high blood pressure is mostly due to presence of chronic kidney disease, which hasn't been detected early. And most of the time, it is due to a congenital abnormality present somewhere in the kidney or in the bladder or somewhere lower down in the urogenital tract. 
So please make sure that every child should have a blood pressure checked from three years onwards and appropriate recording should be made and the, the responsibility falls on the parents as well as in the school teachers. So every school should have a blood pressure check done on their students every year to make sure that the blood pressure is normal in children. So there are various other aspects of chronic kidney disease. The chronic kidney disease is divided into five stages. And stage one and stage two, most of the time, people do not have symptoms, as I already alluded to. Symptoms start developing when the kidney disease is advanced. Stage four, when the kidney function is less than 25%. And stage five, when the kidney functions are less than 15%. So most of the patients who come to us are in either in stage four or stage five because they were never aware that they had kidney disease. So the, 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 the responsibility falls on our primary care physicians, in the family members, and in the teachers, as well as uh, the parents to look for chronic kidney disease and to prevent this enormous burden and to reduce this burden by early intervention. Thank you.